Welcome to our DZ Runs intro. This video's purpose is to inform you about the way we think and plan in the Dark Zone. Since there are so many variables in the Dark Zone, the chance that any route made beforehand will always turn out slightly different for you and your team. So, in the next video we will actually show you some of our routes, but this one is solely to get you up to speed on how to make calls, on what to do next depending on your situation. Before we get into the details I'd like to mention a few things. Basic information like being able to hold 9 items at a time before extracting and having 30 slots in the extraction storage is good to know but very likely that you already knew these things. Note that this means you'll be able to extract 4 times plus 4 extra items after that. I expect most people to have the base of operation maxed out so you'll have a virus filter 4 but if you do not get it first because the dark zone is a place where you want to get underground and you need virus filter 4 for it. With the super basic stuff out of the way let's get a bit more in depth. Since patch 1.6 you can fast travel from inside checkpoints which allows a new tactic in the dark zone. Something I'd like to call speed runs since you'll sweep through a big portion of a dark zone and then fast travel to another one. This allows more efficient runs instead of going in circles. While working on the dark zone routes I found myself playing out several routes and each time the point I expected to start extracting was earlier or later than planned. Since there are so many variables in the dark zone, things like other groups clearing bosses or dark zone chests being on cooldown or even random items dropping from nameless enemies. So I figured most people would encounter the same problem and the use of a planned out route started to negate. Since after every landmark extraction or face off with other players you have to re-evaluate your options and then decide whether to move to a new landmark, checkpoint, safe house or extract. Note that not all the bosses are on landmarks so to make things easier I've put general actions into four categories farming, extracting, resupplying and beefing with other squads. I consider dark zone events like supply drops farming as well. Extracting is a high risk action in my book since it usually attracts players wanting to go rogue and it's an activity everybody does so a very likely place to run into other players. On the resupplying well I tend to stock up on medkits before extracting because it just makes me feel safe. Or at least make sure you have three of them. This last one is really hard to plan and usually just happens. Once you run into a squad or when rogues show up on the radar near you, so this is just another variable that can't be controlled too easy. Alright, so with that said, let's ask ourselves some questions to decide which one we are going to proceed with. Hypothetically. I have 6 out of 9 items in my inventory, plenty of ammo and just 2 medkits. I'm close to an extraction site but I know there is a contaminated zone nearby which holds a named enemy and has a dark zone chest. Theoretically they would get me 4 items at least, so good enough to fill up and extract. However with just 2 medkits it's quite, a, quite easy for another squad to steal my loot while extracting. So maybe I should head towards a safe house or checkpoint and fill up on ammo and medkits. And see if I can find some items in the meantime. After I resupplied I'll go extract and be more certain of my success. This was just an example of the train of thought I would have at this situation. The dark zone is a constant balance between efficient farming since there is a very high density of bosses and chests and staying alive. Being aware on the map to see if there are a lot of other people around is also a good thing to do. This can be done by looking for grayed out landmarks, active extractions and so forth. Just evidence that other players are around. If you get this awareness it's just a little bit harder to be jumped by another squad. Also rocking a jammer pulse is never a bad thing to do. Stealth and, and awareness is definitely a good advantage to have over an enemy squad. I do want to note that some of you have trouble with finding your way around in the dark zone in an efficient way. There are a few good websites that show you everything you need to know. 
For example, the divisionagent.com is a website that allows you to plan out routes without even entering the dark zone or for that matter even opening the game. This page has all the named enemies and dark, and dark zone chests on the dark zone map. Not all the chests, but just the ones that require a key. I use this website to decide whether or not to move to the next dark zone, since I know the last few bosses are far off on the side and I cleared the rest of them, or there is just a more dense place just over the border of the next dark zone. So to conclude, ask yourself, do I need to resupply? How much backspace do I have left? Where is the closest extraction zone and can I run to it and then clear some bosses in the meantime? Are there other players in the dark zone and in which zone do I see activity? After you've answered all these questions for yourself, you should be able to decide what is best to do next. So in the next video we'll actually show you some routes that I'll take personally. I tend to alter the routes halfway through though, since some of the variables make me go a different way. And then I just grab the website and um, look for the best next option. I also wanted to talk about something else. This is one of the variables that make the Dark Zone such a great place. The random events, so the new underground event that might be a nuisance to some of you. Since you're, some people are not entirely sure what to do, here's what you do. Once it begins, you're being alerted that there is a high risk. This means that you can go to an entrance but don't go down yet because you will die very quickly. Wait for the message, contamination levels lowering. Then, after a while, it will drop down to virus filter 5. This, at this point, you can go in. With a good healer or some medkits, you should be able to sustain through it. This is still higher than you can, but with the heals, you should be fine. And note that this event is very profitable. And I promise you, if you're the only one clearing it, your squad you will be extracting afterwards because it gives you so much items it's insane the supply drops is also quite decent however if you're too far off don't bother my ground rule for this is every hundred meters of distance you're away from it counts for 30 seconds to decide whether or not to engage on it so if the supply drop is 500 meters away i need at least two and a half minutes to get there if the timer is less don't bother. So, I hope this video was useful for any of you. If you have any feedback or tips for your fellow agents, feel free to leave a comment, because I'm sure some of you have amazing tactics no one knows about. It's been your boy, what's up, on the Mastermind channel. Peace!